Hello, how are you? Um, so till last year, we had a horse called Lucas. And he really liked to eat grass. He was really greedy. And he once decided it was a super idea to jump a fence and go into a paddock all by himself without using the gate. And he impaled himself. This meant seven months at the vet hospital with extensive wound dressing, two operations, and a lot of expensive looking after. And then there was Malcolm. This kid had autistic spectrum disorder. And I don't know if you are familiar with this, but this kid made no eye contact and spent a lot of his time zoning out. He also had a few self-harming and really dangerous stims. He scratched and bit himself. And he also suffered from epilepsy. Malcolm is nonverbal. And at the time, which was September 2016, Malcolm was learning how to write. Oh, so sorry. He's learning how to hold a pencil and to string some letters together. His mom and his teachers felt that it was taking such a long time, they didn't even know if he could begin writing at all. And then there was Malcolm at the RDA. He was always in his own world, and he appeared absolutely unresponsive. There was no obvious effect to anything that we tried. And that was so with every other horse until we tried him on Lucas. And on Lucas, he smiled, he responded, he participated. He sat up tall and he paid attention. He also followed all sidewalker instructions, and he was absolutely super. So that's him over there. And then Malcolm found out about Lucas, and when his mom told him, he was visibly distressed. And she didn't really know what to do, and so she tried her luck, right? And she pushed a notepad and a pencil next to him and said, you tried it. And suddenly, this boy was writing. He wrote whole sentences. He had perfect spelling and grammar, and his, he wrote entire letters of comfort and encouragement to a horse that had impaled itself on a fence. And I decided to ghostwrite on Lucas's behalf, and that's Lucas reading his letters from Malcolm. And I, I tried to get the vet department to cooperate with me, and that's what they did. So, yeah. So, the fact that he was writing, is that magic? Because I, I, I don't know. So, hi, my name is Erica, and I've worked my whole life with horses in Singapore. Now, horses in Singapore are synonymous with a lot of money. Okay, let's just be honest. A lot of money and novelty. All this amazing stuff that you see at racing, at polo, at dressage, at show jumping. And you know, that show Cavalia, it spoiled it for all of us. Versus what I actually do on a daily basis. I work at the Riding for the Disabled, and now my job focuses on movement. The movement of a horse for balance, improving focus, and coordination. We use movement for the disabled. Horses help people and me. Horses for me are a source of solace and honesty. If not, there is just no point. A lot of the time, we look at big obstacles and big stuff in front of us, and we go, <laughs> I'm not afraid. I'm all right. I can do this. And then there are some days, like that day, when you look at that gigantic jump and you go, oh my God, I am afraid. And I think I just can't. And with horses, that's okay. And with horses, it's a partnership. It's just about you two. And you just got to trust each other. 
And we'll work through it little bit by little bit, but we'll get through to all of it together. And if you don't, you just get back on and try again, <laughs> OK? So more on trust, right? Um, which other animal lets you get on it and then jump over other stuff and keep you on? I, I don't think there's another animal let you do that, right? So in the writing school, I taught lesson after lesson after lesson. And here, I get back more than what I put in. Here, let's bear in mind that here, I pick a really flighty animal that's a prey animal that runs first and asks questions later, and I purposely put the disabled person on. Um, I think it takes a special kind of horse. So horses are really good for you, just saying, right? Who's got a cat or a dog? Super. And who spends a lot of time wishing they could be with their cat or dog cuddling instead of your day job, <laughs> right? OK. So you like to do this because cuddling an animal increases oxytocin levels. And oxytocin levels equals happiness. And guess what? Horses also increase oxytocin levels. They make you happy. So cuddling a horse is happiness. And so this is how horses can help people mentally and physically and emotionally. Horses can also put people in their place. I once knew this really loud guy. He was a mouth-running, joke-cracking, gangsterific dude, right? And while he was doing his dude thing, I don't know what it was also. <laughs> he was looking a bit ridiculous, but he was very happy with himself. And he slipped backwards next to a gigantic horse, and he landed dramatically next to a horse, almost underneath him. And I expected the biggest spook, because it was dramatic. But the horse sidestepped, and instead of stepping on him, just looked at him like, whoa, what are you doing? <laughs> And this dude looked up at that big horse and was instantly humbled. Horses teach you things that you didn't know you needed to know. And horses give you freedom. Kids come to my work, and with all kinds of syndromes and disabilities, there are thousands. And the world is saying that they can't with all these apparatus that they come in, you know, wheelchairs, also crutches, also K-walkers, and all these things that, oh, you look at it and you go, oh, he can't. And suddenly they're on a horse and suddenly they are sitting up really tall. And suddenly in a small, small part of their day, they feel like they're walking. And in for that one moment, they are free and that they absolutely can. And so I think it's magic, because I cannot explain it. The impact that Lucas had on Malcolm, because he was a non-verbal guy, he's learning how to hold a pencil at 15 years old. OK, sure, he had all kinds of other therapy as well, but then he met Lucas and he was writing. He was writing whole letters full of emotion and empathy. Yes. And guess what? He even requested to give flowers when Lucas passed away. This kid did not engage previously. He wanted to give seven whole dollars of his Chinese New Year money to that gigantic, gigantic medical bill that Lucas had incurred. And he came with his backpack and gave it to us. He also counted it out. Oh no, he just shoved it in our faces, really. Okay. So. Hypotherapy helps children who can't walk or people who can't walk, who are dependent solely on their caregivers. And it makes them feel like they can achieve something. And it makes them one step closer to achieving or doing an activity of daily living on their own and independently. 
There are youth who grow up in violent and angry environments. They're never given a chance. And I watched them brush a pony that was abused previously with only gentleness. And they've never seen a horse before. And they start to care and they become really protective. So, no, my job is not glamorous. It's also not so pretty. And on some odd days, I get hit, I get spat on, I get beaten, I get bitten, and I get sneezed on. Just as long as it's not on the same day, it's just a bit too much. Okay, 